I don't know if you saw the latest Apple announcement last week at WWDC, but boy, let me tell you, they have completely changed the game. Last week, Apple held the WWDC 23 keynote, where they announced a couple of upcoming updates to their product line, but also to their operating system. They announced a couple of new Macs, like the MacBook Air, which now you can buy with a 15.3 inch display and also an M2 chip, which is super nice. They upgraded the Mac Pro. Finally, they actually made the upgrade from that slow Intel processor to the new Apple Silicon chip. Although the price for the Mac Pro still remained, drum roll, at $6,999, which is insane. And if you live in the UK like I do, that will be £6,999, which translates to $8,798. I'm not sure why Apple does this to us, but this is not fair. I mean, it's it's insane. We pay $2,000 more just because we live across the ocean. That's not fair at all. In regards to design and user experience related stuff, they also announced the new iOS 17, which has a couple of new interesting updates, like the new personalized contact poster, which you can use to personalize how a person shows when they are calling you. But let's be honest, this is not how your grandparents will look like when they will be calling you. They will probably look something like this. They also added the ability for you to read the live transcript while someone is leaving you a voicemail. So in case they are actually saying something interesting or it's something urgent, you can pick up the call while they are leaving their voicemail. Although I'm not sure about the user experience when someone is trying to focus to leave a voicemail for you and then you in the middle of his sentence pop in with Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 I'm, I'm here, I'm here. You see, uh, Apple rolled out this cool feature so I could read what you were saying. Uh, so you were saying something about some money? Okay, let's move on. They also introduced a new way to share your contact details over AirDrop, which I think it's a really cool idea, which I had a couple of years ago. It was called Shared App. It was a failed business of mine, but never mind. The thing is, it's a cool idea. The only issue that they have is that AirDrop only works 50% of the time. So if they fix AirDrop, then probably this will be a good user experience. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I think nobody will use it. And the biggest highlight is that they introduced this wonderful ability for you to transform any image into a sticker. Not sure what user had this idea or if they did any user research, but now you can actually transform any family member into a meme sticker. So yeah. Thanks, Apple. When it comes to the new Mac OS Sonoma, an interesting UI pattern that they introduce with their new widgets that now you can actually place on your screen is that when you open a new tab or a new app, those are fading away. And personally, I really like this UI pattern. I can see this becoming a trend in the future because it allows you to have more real estate space on your screen when it comes to your design. Now, when we think about user interfaces, instead of just thinking about them as 2D objects or two-dimensional spaces, you can actually start thinking about them as 3D. So you add this extra dimension. I mean, yes, you can argue that is very similar to a pop-up that we have now. But the difference that I see is that when you use a normal pop-up, usually you blur that background or you add an overlay. But here you just fade away the elements and that's it. And although the visual difference is subtle, the user experience is quite different because in the context of this fading effect, you are not losing the initial displayed information. So this layer can now become an expansion of the information you just clicked. Where I see this pattern being most useful is when you're designing complex dashboards, CMS or admin panels that requires you to show a lot of information on the same screen at the same time. By implementing patterns like this one, you might be able to allow the user to expand multiple data points or compare different things. But obviously this will require a lot of exploration till you get it right. So I'm not sure if this will catch on or not, but I really thought that this will be interesting and probably I'm gonna make a video trying to figure out if this pattern can be used in different ways other than, you know, just widgets and just fading them out because I really think this is really interesting. This brings us to the highlight of this event, which is the new Apple Vision Pro. Okay, let's get all the memes out of the way. And the fact that is not the most good looking thing in the world 
and that when you put it on, it looks like you're about to go scuba diving. But boy, when it comes to the user experience, this will open up a completely new world on how we as designers perceive and create digital experience. I mean, just imagine in a couple of years how a simple experience like navigating a website can become. You will have, as a user experience designer, the possibility to show the user different types of information like we're doing now on the screen, but in the same time, you will have the ability to transport them into a different environment, and that will evoke different emotions. So imagine, for example, if you were to take this new Rolex Daytona commercial and convert it into a shopping experience, and you could be immersed into this environment, being on the track in the car sitting next to Paul Newman, and you look around while hearing the sound of the engine coming from the back, thanks to the spatial audio, then as you do this, swoosh, with a simple transition, now you're in the middle of the race. I can put you in the car, you can hear that engine screaming in the back of your head, you can see the competitors left and right, and as you race, pitch black, there is no sound, and you start hearing a ticking noise. Slowly, you start seeing this beautiful watch face up close. You start seeing details that were otherwise impossible to see with the naked eye. And then I take you back inside the car with Paul Newman. And when you look at your hand, you'll see that at your wrist, you could see virtually your Rolex Daytona. And when you're looking up, I will display a card with the new Rolex Daytona already added into your basket. And the only thing you need to do is just tap to buy it. Now, this is what I call a user experience. That's why I think that this device marks the beginning of a new era, not only for design, but for user experience in general. Gone will be those days when we're gonna be restricted by drawing rectangles and circles on a 2D screen. I think we will be entering a new era where video, sound design, and 3D modeling will become essential skills for us as user experience designers. These skills will need to become part of our toolkit as we will no longer need to only think about how users interact with the products on a 2D environment or a 2D screen, but also how these experiences will be translated to people who are using devices like the Vision Pro. If you're still having doubts, Think about the fact that Apple managed to get a giant like Disney to hop on board before they even released the product. You can imagine what the CEO of Disney saw behind the scene in order for him to say like, yeah, we're on board with this. Personally, I cannot wait to get my hands on one of these headsets and start creating and experimenting with some crazy user experiences. I mean, I've been talking about this for years with my fellow colleagues, and now the moment has finally arrived. Digital product design or UI UX design, however you wanna call it, it will become a hell of a lot more interesting. So stay sharp, keep learning, and I will see you in the next video. And if you like this video and you want to see another one, then uh, you can click up here.